What's up guys, welcome back to DIY Dudes. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a basic picket fence to separate an area of your yard using pressure treated lumber and basic building techniques. Let's do this. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you're building your fence is decide on your post layout. I'm gonna build my fence along the perimeter of this deck and then I've got a straight shot over on that side. I'm gonna try and keep it to an eight foot spacing for the posts because that's the, the lumber I've got for the span between the posts. But there's a few uh, spacings that aren't gonna be eight feet. I'm gonna have a gate right here, which is 36 inches wide. I'm gonna have a, a post a couple feet away right at the corner of my house. And then I'm gonna split the difference between the span from the last gate post to the corner. So I've already measured this. I've got my, my gate 36 inches is gonna be from here to here. And then from there to there is 12 feet. So I'm gonna split the difference and have a post centered right in the middle at six feet. So those are all laid out. I've uh, done the layout with a tape measure and I've painted the location for the posts on the ground with paint. So I know where to dig. So I'm using my hole digging shovel. Basically scoops the dirt out of the bottom of the hole and you just kind of pinch it up. I want to dig each of these holes at least two feet deep. So I've got, I've got the, the bottom of the post below the frost level that I typically encounter around here. And I actually have markings painted on my, on my uh, hole digging shovel. So from the bottom up, you can see this orange line, two feet. So rather than check the depth of the hole as I'm going, I know I just gotta keep going until I hit that mark. Each time I hammer it down and get a, get a good grab of dirt, I usually get about an inch or two. Oh, perfect. You can see I'm just below the two feet mark with this hole. The ground I'm dealing with is nice clay, so it's a, this is a nice tight hole. I'm gonna go ahead and dig the rest of these just like that. So now I'm working on this straight run of post holes. I'm gonna go from that edge of the deck all the way into the fence behind me. I've got this post hole dug, that post hole dug, and one more right behind me. Um, so you can do this two ways to, uh, to make sure that they're straight. You can either attach a string line to a fixed point at that side, and uh, the string line to a fixed point at that side, and pull it tight, and that will give you your guide for the post holes as you're digging. I'm just kind of doing them by eye because I have this uh, existing pathway that I can use as my straight edge to make sure everything's nice and straight. So I'm just lining these holes up against that edge and just eyeballing them to make sure they're straight all the way along this run. Good work. So another common obstruction you're gonna find when you're digging your fence posts are tree roots. So I tried to dig through it with, the, with just my hole digger. Didn't quite work. So you've got two choices, three choices. You can either move the hole or you can use an axe or a saw to get through it. In my case, I'm gonna try using the axe. Let's see how that goes. Okay, looks like I'm through the hole. I've got the roots kind of cut out along the edge and I can see nice clay beneath it. So I'm just gonna keep going with the hole digger between those roots. All right, so I've got my 12 foot post laid out I'm actually gonna use each 12 foot section to make two posts. So I'm gonna cut it in half at six feet. I've dug these holes so they're about two feet in the ground. I've got a, a foot of deck height and then I want my fence to be about uh, three feet high. I'm basically gonna see how the six feet looks in the ground and then continue that height straight across through along the entire length of the fence. So I'll start by ripping a few of these 12 foot pieces in half uh, and see how it goes. All right, so I've got my corner post set pretty good. I'm happy with the height. I'm gonna use this as the 
measuring point for which I'm going to set the alignment for all the other posts. Everything kind of already lines up to this point, but I'm going to go ahead and install this post using my concrete mix, get it all leveled up, make sure it's good. And then I've got a little screw here uh, to which I'm going to tie a string and I'm going to use that to set the alignment of all of the other posts along this run. To concrete in my posts, rather than using uh, mixed concrete, I'm using this ready uh, fence and post mix, fast setting. So the idea behind this is you have your hole dug and you literally pour this dry into the hole, do whatever adjustments you're going to do on your post and then just add water and the water will saturate the, the dry mix. Harden up and you'll get a nice good concrete mix. Saves a lot of time rather than mixing everything in a wheelbarrow, dumping it in. And the, the huge benefit to this as well is that you don't have to wait for the concrete to set. You basically dump this in, you can level your post and basically just move on to the next steps from there. It saves a ton of time. Okay, perfect. So this side is level bang on. This side is also level bang on. So I've got my corner post staked in with a few scrap pieces of wood and I've got my string line strung from end to end. And I'm gonna use that string line to line up all my four by four posts to make sure the alignment is pretty straight along that whole run. level across the front back and each side good I'm gonna move on to the next ones before I level this one in the middle I want to do this corner one to make sure my alignment's true all the way across and then I can just line the middle one up to match so I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in a little bit and then just level the post from there okay so same idea I've got this guy the alignment roughly set I'm gonna add some concrete into the base and then do the fine leveling from there. As you add the concrete, you want to try and kind of add it all around the perimeter of the post. So what I was trying to do there was hit the bottom. So the bottom kicks out back this way. The reason I was doing that is I was a bit concerned about the alignment, but Think it's okay now that i have these four uh posts set on this run i'm going to go ahead and add some water uh to mix up the concrete in the base and then i'll go and continue on the the post for the rest of the run so this is my fixed point i'm going to start the alignment from and i'm going to string it straight all the way through to the back there so i'm, I'm going to go ahead and measure and align the back post by the fence there and then once i have that one set perfectly i'm going to string uh, this string all the way across this run and then align all of the intermittent posts to that alignment good So I've got all my fence posts installed and now I wanna make sure that all of my tops are at the same height straight across this entire run of fence. Um, I'm, in order to do this, I'm gonna use my laser level. Um, if you don't have a laser level, I recommend you buy one, but if you don't have one, you can use a string line and a little line level and kind of carry the line straight across with the, with the string. So I've got it set, uh, it's probably hard to see, but I'm gonna set it uh, right at the top elevation of this post and I'm gonna kind of move from post to post and carry that elevation, that height, straight along this entire run. I'll mark each one with a black marker and that's where I know to cut my tops. The elevation of the laser is here. 
and it's also here and it's also on that other post down there and that other post there in the corner so i can easily mark the height of all of these posts in about two seconds with my laser level rather than messing around with a string and a, a line level and making sure it's all at the right elevation so i've got my speed square and a black permanent marker i'm going to go ahead and mark all of these posts So I've got the tops marked straight across the entire run. Now I'm actually going to support the pickets using um, two pieces of two by four, which I'm going to screw to these posts. And I want the top of the top board to be six inches from the top. And I want the bottom of the bottom board to be six inches from the bottom. Um, so they'll have a pretty good support on both the top and the bottom. And that way the top which people lean against is going to have a, a full good support. So there's not too much of an overhang. If it was too low, people could lean over the picket and potentially snap the picket. So six inches is good. I've done six inches on the, uh, the old fence that I installed. It worked out just great. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll mark, uh, six inches down from the one location and I'll cast my laser level or along the entire run, the exact same as I did for the tops. So I've got the height of the top cutoff marked out. I've got the height of the top rail marked out. Now I'm just gonna mark out the location of the bottom rail and I should be ready to mount those supports. So I've got all my various post spacings. I need to install my two by four top rail and bottom rail to these. And I need to basically measure and cut each one. The idea behind this is I generally want the two by four to land half on the post so that I can butt the other two by four right up to that. So each two by four gets mounted to half of the post. Um, certain situations in the corner, I'm gonna use blocking to reinforce the, uh, the two by fours to give me more of a screwing surface, but generally that's the idea. I'm gonna measure each span, screw it so that it lines up with the center of the post and butt the other two by four up to that. So for example, I'm gonna have a gate from here to here. So my first two by four is gonna go all the way to the end. And I'm gonna want this guy at 76 and three quarters of an inch. So I've got my compound miter saw here and I'm gonna use that to cut all of my two by fours. 76 and three quarter for my first cut. So I'm using a three inch deck screw. Got my layout marked out. So for each of these top rails, you want to do at least two screws. So before I screw on the pickets, I want to cut all of my fence posts to the same height. Uh, last night I marked all of these with the laser level, so I'm confident that, that, that they're at the same elevation throughout the entire fence. I've pre-marked all the locations on two sides, and I'm just going to simply cut off the tops with my skill saw. So I have a few fence pickets ready to be installed, and I've decided to start at this fixed corner. Um, I've got a few things I'm going to use as templates. So this block is cut at two inches. I'm going to use that just to quickly gauge my height for the bottom and rest the picket against when I screw it. And I'm also going to use this template for the top. So when I install this board, I want the top of the board to be at that height. I'm going to use the top rail to dictate my height along this whole run so I have a consistent height across the top of the fence. Uh, I'm not using the bottom because my deck might be slightly off level and might kind of fall away from the top. This will ensure I get a true consistent height straight along the top. So line the board up where you want it to go. You can see the tops there, bottoms rested there. For my first board, I'm gonna use my level just to make sure everything looks good. Looks good. 
and I'm gonna install it using these inch and a half screws. I'm gonna go ahead and do two screws for every board. And then for my next one, I'm gonna use a picket as the spacing template. So I want these guys equally spaced because I took the time to level my first board. My next one should be level as well. Just double check my template. Still good. Perfect, so that's my first and second picket. I'm, gonna get, I'm going to continue this run straight down the line and basically through the entire rest of the fence in the same manner. Um, you've gotta do two screws per picket. If you do one, these little one by fours are prone to twisting. So you might end up with some snapping later if you've got just one screw holding it in place. So definitely do two at the top rail, two at the bottom, straight across. And you can carry that consistent spacing straight through without issue. You might run into a problem when you get into the corners because my fence, it's definitely not gonna be equally spaced uh, at uh, alternating one by four boards straight through. You're gonna get to a weird gap at the end. So get pretty close to the end, a few pickets away and assess your spacing as you get towards the end and just kind of split the difference to make it work. So you guys can see as I work my way down the line, I'm using the uh, template for the top as well as checking my spacing as I go down the line. I get each piece roughly leveled in, check it a few more times. And then what I found works best is I hold it in place and I just do one screw in the top. And then now that I have the one screw in the top, I can check to see uh, how level the board is. Perfect, so I got my spacing up top, I got my spacing down below, level to the bottom. Come here. Guys, this is the reason why I'm building this fence. This crazy animal. So I have two openings in my fence where I need to put gates. Uh, this one is about 48 inches. The other one where I need to get my lawnmower through, I made it about six feet. I'm gonna start by building this one. So my opening is 47 and a half inches. So I'm gonna cut my gate to be 47 inches. So I got a quarter inch on either side of play uh, for the hinge and the latch adjustment. It's gonna be a simple um, frame. And then it's gonna be faced with pickets just like the rest of the gate. So I've got uh, four pieces of the lumber already cut. These are cut at 47 inches. So these will be my top rails. And these are my posts. Uh, these I cut at uh, 27 and a half, I believe. So my top rail should be about that height and my bottom rail should be about that height. And then my pickets will match uniformly all the way through. So I'm basically just gonna screw this thing together and try and keep it as square as possible. Not try, it must be as square as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll screw in each corner. I wanna screw it from the top down and then I'll check, um, I'm gonna check as I go to make sure it's square with my framing square. Got the outer frame all screwed up. Very square. And my width is pretty good. We got uh, about a half inch either side. I'm sorry, quarter inch either side, half inch total. Perfect.
So the last piece of the frame of the gate is the cross brace. I'm gonna add one piece of wood at an angle in order to uh, stiffen up those joints to prevent the gate from collapsing in on itself. It's gonna make sure this thing maintains its nice square shape for years to come. Uh, so I've got a piece of wood that's a little bit longer than the openings. I'm going to, you could figure out the distances and the angles and measure this, but that seems like a lot of math. So I'm actually going to slide the wood underneath. I'm a strong believer in field marking all of my cuts. So I've got my piece of wood uh, built where I want it to go. And I'm literally gonna mark uh, in the inside corners where the where it abuts the wood adjacent to it. And then once I cut out uh, the wood on those marks, it should fit perfectly in this opening with zero measuring, zero math, uh, zero calculations. So I've got my mark just beside the, uh, the wood on the frame here. I wanna make sure when I cut this, I'm gonna cut just inside of that. So this board is nice and tight. Uh, I don't want it too loose. So that is a tight fit. Perfect. So I've got all my fence pickets cut. I cut them all the same height as these adjacent pickets so everything is gonna butt up nicely. Um, the spacing on these gates, because I'm infilling this afterwards, the picket spacing isn't gonna match perfectly. Um, one offset, one, basically one picket, not one picket, one picket, not one picket. That spacing is not gonna work because I've, I've, I've done it all the way through and then I'm filling in this small gap. Not only that, I want two flat surfaces on either side of the gate in order to mount the mounting hardware for the gate, uh, the hinges, as well as the gate latch. So I'm going to start with a picket tight at either end. And then I'm going to figure out the center of the board, which if this is 47, my center is going to be 23 and a half inches. So I'm going to have one picket starting right in the center one on either side. I'm gonna do uh, the picket offset pattern all the way across. And then the end, I'm gonna have a, a gap that it's not quite gonna work out. I'm just gonna split the difference so that I get a symmetrical offset on both sides. All right, so I'm ready to mount my uh, door hinges for the gate. I've got uh, a gate hardware kit that I purchased from my local building supply store. I've made sure that this board is perfectly level. So I'm gonna use that as my guide. The rotating part of the hinge, I wanna line up with the edge of this board. And I'm gonna install them at a height where I'm gonna be screwing into the top and the bottom rail of the fence. So it should get uh, a good solid bite into it. I'm gonna use three inch screws. I wish I had three and a half inch screws, but three inch screws should be okay. Okay, perfect. So I've actually taken my level, rested it against the side of the hinge and made sure it's straight up and down. You do that after you get one screw in, so that pins it in place. So if I had somebody to hold this, it'd be nice, but I don't. So I want to raise this about two inches. So I'm going to cut a couple of two inch blocks to rest my gate on top of, and then I can uh, install the hinge to the gate and level everything out from there. That is a pretty smooth swinging gate. Okay, I'm very happy with that. She's gonna go ahead and screw the rest of the screws in and then I'll do the latch on the other side and this thing will be done. So for the gate hardware, you're gonna to wanna to kind of field fit this. So just take your hardware, put it where you want it to go and then literally mark out the locations with a pen where you're gonna screw it because you're not gonna be able to hold both of these at the same time. Um, try and 
install it in a location where you're going to screw it into a full surface of board behind it like a two by four or the four by four post you don't want to screw it just into this little thin picket board because it won't bite onto anything you need a full backing of two by four or four by four behind it so i've got this marked out i'm going to go ahead and screw it in with some three inch screws swings good locks good right in the center all right and then last but not least finishing touch a little black handle. That's a wrap. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you learned a thing or two throughout the course of this video. Please remember to like, subscribe and share. See you next time.